great this morning to have a growing friend and partnership in Carl Knightley from Faith in Later Life. He's the CEO, and we've been working at Neighborhood Prayer Network with Faith in Later Life for over a year now, and it's been a wonderful engagement. Good morning, Carl. Morning, Carl. I always enjoy saying <laughs> two that. Two Carls in the house. Uh, I know that you, uh, Faith in Later Life is a collaboration um, of a few ministries setting this idea up. Can you give us a bit of background and history of how, how it came into being? Sure, thanks, Carl. So um, Faith in Later Life is just about three years old. Um, and, and as you say, it, was, it started as a collaboration, so a cross-charity initiative. There were five Christian charities behind Faith and Native Life. Um, Pilgrim's Friend Society, Key Change and Mission Care, all, all run Christian care homes. And then the London City Mission and the Salvation Army. And they all had a real heart for older people, um, were perhaps focusing more on the residential side of things, but not exclusively. But they wanted to come together to create this vehicle, Faith and Native Life, which solely focused on um, older people. Perhaps with the sense that churches often did a lot around younger people and families and and those are really good and really important, but there seemed to be a bit of a gap when it came to older people. So they stepped out in faith and set up Faith in Later Life. And they've all obviously got a background in uh, engaging and caring for the elderly in one capacity or another. You know, what, what strikes me as I, I think about what you just said there is uh, all too often in Christian society, we can write off people thinking, oh, they passed it, are they too old to, do, to bother or to do anything? when actually those people have been valuable contributors to the Christian cause, in some cases, all of their life. Um, and the wisdom that they've brought to bear, if we only would sit down and just chat to some of the older folk around us, uh, we, we'd probably learn something from them. <laughs> Quite right. And, you know, that's one of the things that we talk about. We, <clears throat> Faith and Nature Life wants to uh, inspire and equip Christians to reach, serve and empower older people. And they can all mean different things. And I think we often focus on serving older people. We have a biblical mandate, if you like, you know, to, to serve our, our elders. And that's really important. But we mustn't get uh, get carried away in, in that respect. So that's really important. And maybe we should do that more. I'm sure we should in some circumstances. But actually, as you say, we're missing out if we're not engaging with our older people and listening, not just serving because it's the right thing to do. Um, you know, that wisdom can only be accumulated with the perspective of having followed the Lord for so many years. Uh, We'd love to see churches where older people are telling the youngsters about what it looks like to follow Christ faithfully, where older people are leading the prayer ministry along with others, because we know that, um, you know, obviously this is an area that crosses over very much with NPM, but we know older people, older Christian people, are real prayer warriors quite often. Yeah, and I know uh, you were telling me some months ago that you yourself have a a relationship with an older lady that you, you often go and see and she encourages you and prays for you. How, how is that going? Yeah, so um, my friend Betty, she's, um, she's been going to the church that I go to for many, many years. And, you know, like other people, I suppose, you know, I, I just um, didn't notice her, which is to my shame, really. And so we've all got lots of learning to do, I think. But I was introduced to her a few years ago um uh, when she was brought up to the front of church the church warden was just talking about various unsung heroes and he interviewed betty and betty was saying you know she's been praying faithfully for the church and the church community and the community more broadly for 70 years um and um she's not she was 98 at that point and, and we struck up a really lovely friendship my kids would run to her in church um she had a real sense of humor as well as wisdom and, and godliness and, um, and what's really interesting, and which we perhaps forget, is that older people um, have plans as well as anybody else. You know, at that point, she was planning her 100th birthday party. Uh, wow. She hadn't reached 99 yet. Um, and, you know, despite this the difficult time we're in, uh, we, I was uh, privileged to celebrate her 100th birthday party with her in the summer, albeit socially distanced. And, um, you know, she's, she's somebody who just, I was moaning one morning, uh, this isn't giving a very good example of, of perhaps who I am, but uh, I'll, I'll, let's go with it anyway. Um, I was moaning one morning about being woken up at half five by my small children. And Betty just quietly and calmly said she's up at half four uh, to jump in the shower before she's up at half five praying for the day. And she didn't say it with any, you know, hint of pride or anything along those lines. It's just an example of those older Christians who are just such faithful prayers. And, uh, you know, 
if I need any prayer for particular reasons, Brett is one of the first people I'll go to. And these instances and, you know, where we meet people, uh, they shape our lives, don't they? I, I know in my own uh, background walk, uh, a lady called Nancy Francis shaped my early Christian outlook. Um, I, I was going to church in my uh, teens, late teens, and uh, there was a a couple who came to represent the Chinese Mission Society. And uh, I went to go and do something for Nancy. We had both been in the meeting in the week. And I noticed Nancy used to have Meals on Wheels. And the, the Meals on Wheels meal was cut into two and separated onto two plates. And, uh, you know, Nancy was a widower, uh, just getting state support. And I said, well, Nancy, is everything okay? And she said, well... I was so touched by uh, Ed and Nano Kilborn who came to speak that week. She said, uh, I, I was thinking of what I could do. So I'm only going to have half the meals on wheels now. And I'm going to eat the meat, you know, make it last two days. And I'm going to send them the difference um, and support the uh, training of Chinese pastors in the underground church. That, that I mean, that blew me away that, somebody would sacrifice so much in the latter days of their life um she went on to live another 15 to 20 years and we calculated at one point that on her own she probably paid for about 20 to 22 uh, pastors to go through bible college uh, which is unbelievable and you know kind of puts us to shame when we can't get out of bed in the sunday morning to even go to church you know so, yeah, I mean, the inspiration of, of having that wealth of life experience, wisdom, prayerfulness as Betty, you know, how many hours of prayer does she pray in a year? And what is, you know, what is the Lord and her prayer life in chatting to each other like, you know, I'd be amazed to see that. But anyway, we, we can digress. There's so many stories, I guess. Now, Faith in Later Life obviously uh, has been a bit tripped up by COVID along with everybody else. You were in the throes of starting to get church champions together to spread the message. What, what's been happening during COVID and how have you been responding to the need? So one of the things we were really um, pushing hard before COVID was our um, national activities directory where you would go onto our website and type in uh, the postcode of your elderly aunt in Doncaster, for example, and it'll bring up all the churches we knew of around her, which were running lunch clubs and outreach events and so on and so forth. And, and of course, church buildings closed and so that's paused. So we weren't able to put energy into growing our church activities directory. Um, but with COVID, came other opportunities, you know, a real opportunity for the church to respond. And uh, as an organisation, a Christian organisation, as a, as a voice for older people, if you like, uh, we were very busy with uh, just trying to share um, some expertise and, uh, and practical ideas uh, with Christians and churches about how to continue to engage with their older people, how to reach out to their older people who are shielding and that sort of thing. So we ramped up the blogs that we were uh, putting on our website and articles uh, the other main thing that we did was we were part of, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> excuse me, part of um, founding uh, the Daily Hope Telephone Line Initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, we sat down with colleagues at Lambeth Palace and uh, uh, Pippa Kramer, who's from Connections at Holy Trinity Claygate. Uh, and uh, the Lord brought a small group of us together and we ended up um, setting up the Daily Hope phone line. And, um, and that's since been championed by the Church of England, which we're excited about. And what that was and is, uh, is a free telephone line, free from anybody uh, who has a mobile or, or landline in the UK to phone up 24 hours a day. Uh, and they'd phone up and hear hymns, just hymns on loop if they wanted some comfort from music. So they, they didn't have to necessarily be Christian uh, people who were phoning up. But also um, like biblical reflections, prayers, even church services. For those older people or, or people of any age, actually, um, who were behind their door and who couldn't access church online, maybe they didn't use the internet. And that's been the, the main uh, project we've been involved with, which has been really, really exciting, uh, actually. Just, just on your point about church champions, we've still been growing our church champion network. And um, actually, we've just started our 12 months of, of, of monthly Zoom seminars and, and, and encouragement okay. for our church champions. So we've yeah. migrated onto, onto the online platform reasonably well. 
Um, and it's more important now than ever, I think, for us to be seeking to equip and walk with uh, regular people in church who have a ministry with older people. So that's continuing to grow, and, and we're thankful to the Lord for that. And, and obviously those church champions, while we couldn't meet, they still got access to emails and telephones. I'm sure they were uh, spreading the message of Daily Hope and some of the other resources that um, you know, you've brought out. I'll come back to Daily Hope in a second, but I know we, we pushed this book that uh, you guys helped organize, publish, uh, Finishing Well by Ian Knox. Now, we made that our book of the week at NPN, and it sold out in a few days. So we've just got new stock in because I understand from Adam that uh, he's actually going to be interviewing Ian at some point. So um, we look forward to that. But, you know, we've got more stock. I'm going to send an email around uh, to say if you if you missed out and you wanted a copy, uh, you can get a copy from petersbrook.com. Now, coming back to uh, Daily Hope, there's been an incredible take up of that, isn't it? Because I know uh, when I was at UCB running UCB Prayer Line, uh, we we got the call volume up to about 100, 140,000, I think, at the highest point. Um, and it's quite a complex process because, I mean, that was a prayer line and there was training involved. This is a different kind of line, um, but it, there's been an incredible response to it, isn't there? Yeah, we've, uh, <clears throat> we've been really pleased with the response. We knew or we had a sense that this was really important. Uh, if you look at the statistics, um, even before COVID, um, two and a half million people over the age of 75 have never used the internet. Wow. Yeah, and um, we, uh, particularly perhaps in smaller rural churches maybe, um, you know, there wasn't necessarily a provision for, uh, for older people. And, and, and some older people are very um, good with the internet and, and watching services on YouTube. So this isn't about tiring everybody with the same brush. This is just about not wanting to exclude an older person. And so we wanted to say to churches that we want to support you. Um, primarily, we want the local church to, to support and empower their older people. But actually, if you haven't got anything available, then please do talk about the daily hope. Tell older people in your congregation and actually older people in the wider community about the daily hope phone line. And um, uh, as I said, the, the choice is yours, what you listen to. It's not interactive, although it does give you the opportunity to phone through to other uh, Christian telephone lines, which are interactive. But the great news is you can sit there in your pyjamas. Uh, no one's <laughs> going to answer you back and you can just listen and be encouraged. Um, you know, we call it daily hope because we want people to be able to phone up at any time, whether they're feeling distressed or whether they're just fine mm. to hear the hope of the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, since we launched it at the end of April, We've had over 250,000 calls uh, wow. and lots of those people have called back. We've used three million minutes of calls so far and we're really excited that the, this phone line is continuing uh, and the Lord continues to provide for that because we are continuing to make it free. We feel that's very important. And um, along with the, the biblical reflections, we've got additional mental health reflections. We had a holiday at home uh, in August and we've just launched uh, armchair exercises <laughs> so, so physical encouragement as well as, as of course, uh, biblical and gospel encouragement and hymns. So we're delighted that it's continuing. And we really just want to say, if you know an older person or somebody who is vulnerable and at home, and, and this would value knowing that this is there, they don't have to use it. They can just know that it's there. It's 0800 804 8044. As we enter a new, um, sadly, a new season of, of, of perhaps of coronavirus, uh, we're, we're continuing. Daily Hope is continuing. Yeah, and I, I know, you know, even my mother would say uh, when I go visit her, um, the only direct company I've got some days is the television, you know. Uh, so it's wonderful that somebody can ring in uh, to Daily Hope, play the hymns in the background. To be honest, I might be ringing in to do some armchair exercises myself. Uh, you know, we, we're not out and about as much these days with COVID. So, you know, it's, it's, it's good, isn't it? But what, what have you got coming up? What have you got to look forward to? Obviously, we've got to get beyond coronavirus. I know we we are working on um, Neighbour Sunday. We've got some exciting stuff uh, happening there, although we had planned this year to get a neighbour to invite another neighbour, take them to a Sunday service and uh, uh, you know try and make that the emphasis. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what's coming up on Neighbour Sunday, which is the 18th of October? 
yeah, we're really looking forward to this second Labour Sunday. Last year, when we partnered with you for the first time, um, yeah, it was uh, quite a, right at the beginning of our partnership, and so we're really pleased with how it went. Uh, but we're looking forward to this second one, where our partnership is more established, if you like, and we want to make that an opportunity just to stop and pause. And again, uh, because of the nature of our work at Faith and Nature Lab with older people, uh, we want uh, we're encouraged and excited that Neighbour Sunday will have that um, uh, focus on older people as, as well as prayer. So we're looking forward uh, to being able to um, stop and say, listen, everybody, let's have a think about uh, as churches, particularly uh, given that um, COVID-19 is impacting older people disproportionately. How can we be thinking about our older people in our churches, but obviously fundamentally in our wider communities as well? Um, you know, in our streets, are we thinking about those older people? How can we encourage them? How can we pray for them, of course, with NPN's focus? And... Um, as I said earlier, it's just a really important time for the church to be able to stop and say, um, we are here, we are the hands and the feet of the Lord Jesus. And where those older people are feeling uh, anxious or fearful, or even if they're just frustrated because they're perfectly healthy and want to be outside, but they, they can't. Whatever it might be, and we want to say that as a church, as a body of believers, we're here and we want to talk about this and we want to pray. Brilliant, Carl. Well, thanks for the time today. Uh, it's always good to chat with you. No doubt we'll have a, another session at some point to discuss some other resources. But, um, you know, we root you on uh, at Neighbour Prayer Network and thanks for everything that you do. I know some, sometimes it means early mornings and late nights and long days, lots of meetings to just uh, respond to demands and questions and queries. Like, like, you know, our ministry is like that as well. But uh, thanks for all you do. And until we meet again, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell, and we'll see you next time. God bless.